love uh, Sunday school. That's supposed to be a time that you uh, gain some new things or at least uh, maybe a, a better understanding sometimes of the Word of God. And so I uh, want to be able to try to do that today. But man, it's good to be here. Looking forward to the missions conference. How many of y'all have uh, already made a decision you're going to be here during missions conference? Let's. All right, good, amen, good. All right, take your Bibles this morning, if you would. A familiar verse, Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. All right, how many of y'all are saved this morning? Let's see. I noticed the preacher didn't raise his hand, so uh, I'm not sure what that's about. But, uh, <laughs> All right, good. And we did have a good time yesterday. It's unusual that we get uh, run off from two places uh, like that. It's not that it's unheard of, but uh, uh, normally. And I, I was talking to my wife this morning as we was getting dressed. You know, who, who would have thought that here in America that, that you'd be run off for just simply handing out Bible? I mean, stop and think about uh, our founding fathers, uh, you know, the, the, I think their thoughts, they, they'd just be appalled that, that somebody is asked to leave for simply handing out a copy of the Word of God. And, uh, you know, I, I think they, they would have thought, wait a minute, this is what we're fighting for. Yes. Yes. This is yes. what we're dying for, yes. to, to be able to serve God openly, yes. freely, uh, uh, without hindrance or uh, so it, it's sad that that you have uh, and, and you know both of them that ran us off of course are corporate folks and uh, uh, it, it is sad where our uh, nation is as far as corporations are concerned they they are kind of woke now if you know what that term is and uh, that means they're asleep morally uh, but they are work woke when it comes to uh, this society. So, uh, you know, I'm just thankful I'm involved in the work of God uh, that Satan opposes. Amen. And uh, just uh, pray that uh, God will continue to use the Bible handouts. I know I'll I'll say more about it during the week. But let's let's get down to uh, business. Mark chapter 16. Look, if you would, I'm gonna start reading. Uh, let's see, in verse 12, and read down through verse 15, all right? If you have it, say amen, wave at me, do something, let me know you got it, all right? Uh, if you have a Bible, in verse 12, after that he appeared, after that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Uh, afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Boy, if we're, there was ever a, just a, I guess, a good summary of what our job is uh, as the Lord's uh, church, as the Lord's people, we have it here. Just a summary, Jesus said plainly, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And so uh, I, I want to just look at this this morning. Is God's command literal and can it be accomplished? Is it literal and can it be accomplished? Let's pray and we'll get busy. Father, we sure do love you this morning. Thank you again for the opportunity to be able to be here at Solid Rock. Lord, we need your presence and power today, and Lord, uh, your wisdom, and just ask you, God, please meet with us in a way that our hearts are not only stirred, that, that we know the presence of God is with us, but God, that, that you might uh, have liberty to work in our hearts and in our minds, in our lives, God, that we would be refreshed and renewed uh, to uh, uh, battle for you in a wicked day. In Christ's name we pray, amen. You know, it's thinking about uh, uh, God and no doubt, folks, we, we can see 
uh, man, from the very, even before creation, it, it is obvious God's in love with us. Amen. I, I mean, even, I, I mean, you stop and there's so many verses, but obviously John 3, 16, uh, probably uh, the most well-known verse. And, and of course, for God so loved the world, not, not just love, but he so loved us. Something about our language, when you throw in that word, so, it, it shows an increased intensity. And, and uh, so, so he, he said he so loved the world. And, and this is the thing. He's prepared a kingdom uh, for those that would be saved. And we know his will, according to 2 Peter 3, 9, it's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 4, uh, it, it says this, God's desire and will is for all men to be saved. Uh, I mean, God doesn't, listen, it, folks, it, it is, it, obviously, our world is so messed up. Man, we, we, want to maybe discount folks because of wh whether it's race or ethnicity or our income level or education and all of those kind of things. But, but God's, God has nothing to do with all of that. Man, his heart is if you are alive, you have a never dying soul and his will is this. I want you in all of eternity in heaven. And we need to, as the people of God, obviously our, our mind ought to be in that same direction. And, and so uh, if that is God's will, and it is, in my mind, then it brings up some questions concerning the command that we have here. And I want to just look at those uh, uh, questions, and then look for some biblical answer to the questions. Let me let me just pose a couple of questions first. Is God's command here in Mark sixteen fifteen? Is it literal? In other words, did He really mean? I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Is that really what He meant? And and understand now, I, I believe with all my heart. See, Jesus gave that command, not, not to every Christian, but he's given it to his local church. Now, obviously, every Christian should be involved in that, amen? amen. But specifically, uh, understand that, that matter of reaching uh, into the world uh, is his command, if you will, let me put it this way. It's the very purpose of, and command for the local church. Amen. That's our job. That's our, our, our very existence is for uh, the, the uh, reaching of the laws for Christ. And, and it, it, it's, it's this. Can that command be accomplished? I, I mean, did he, did he give us a command that's literal and can it be accomplished? Think about this, man, if it can't be accomplished, what, what kind of ogre must God be Come on. that he would give us a command that could not be accomplished? Come on. Now, let's think about this. Did God put a plan in place to fulfill the command? Is there a plan to, to fulfill that command or did he, did he do this? He said, okay, look, look. Uh, church, I want you to reach the gospel, re reach the world with the gospel, and, and I, 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 you, you, good luck. You figure it out how to get it done. See, does that make sense to anybody? Come on, now, y'all forgive me, but I tell folks this all the time. I'm a retarded Texan. Uh, Young, say amen right there. Be all right. Uh, I, 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 now listen. Listen, I, to stop and to think that, that God would give us a command, all right, I want you to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, and good luck, you figure it out. He is telling, now y'all forgive me, he is telling a bunch of inept, amen, uh, 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 simple-minded, folks, that's what we are when it comes to, I mean, compare ourselves to God. Come on, we don't have the wisdom that God has. 
And, and so did, did he just say, okay, good luck, figure it out? Yeah. All right. Uh, what about this? Uh, uh, has the command ever been accomplished? And, and I mean, he, he gave the command. And let, let me say it this way. It became, he, he, after his resurrection, now, he makes it clearer than ever before what God's will is as far as reaching every creature. He, he gives it to us uh, in, in several places. We're going to look at that in just a minute. So, uh, uh, but he makes it clear. I, I want you to reach the world. I want every creature. He had never made it that clear before in all the scriptures. So I would say, in the last 2,000 years since Christ, uh, approximately, obviously, but since Christ's resurrection, has that command been accomplished? Is it literal? It, it, uh, uh, does God have a plan? A and can it be accomplished? All right. So let's, let's see if we can answer those questions real quickly. Preacher, what time do we need to, to end up? All right, first, uh, let's do this. Is the command literal? Let's look at four different passages, I think, that uh, prove the writers thought it was literal. All right, uh, simply put, let's go to Matthew 28. We're looking at every time he gave, gives the, uh, if you will, the great commission. As he gives the great commission, uh, the, the writers, uh, if you will, uh, in as the Spirit of God leads them, they make it clear. It, it, it's a literal command. Amen. They really, they, they thought, the writers thought, okay, this is what God's plan is. Now, listen, let me, let me say this so that we don't have a misunderstanding. See, I, I don't, I, I believe with all my heart, see, this is God's word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, no exaggerations. Yes. Come on. There's no exaggerations in it. Good. And and can I can I be honest with you? See, I don't believe God just kind of left it up to to man that he uh, <coughs> whispered in their ear and said, "This is what I want," and and then kind of left them up to to writing it down. See, I don't think that's how it worked. I think he told them exactly what to write. That's why we believe in a verbally inspired. God spoke it, they wrote it, all right? He, he, they were born along, all right? So, so let's, let's give several scriptures. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach, what's the next two words? See, here, here we, Matthew thought, okay, now this is what God told me to write, all nations. That doesn't leave anybody out, amen? That, that's, he, he meant that too. It's literal. Uh, we, we know the scripture that we're in right now. <coughs> Excuse me, Mark chapter 16. Y'all forgive me, I, I got a cold uh, the other day and I am still struggling with a throat thing, so if y'all would please forgive me. As I, 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 it's my imitation of Brother Hiles in the past, amen? Oh. And that how he used to do preacher. He had, <coughs> and and then he'd uh, speak for a little bit, and he'd <coughs> and cough again, and yeah. Anyway, uh, Mark chapter sixteen. Go ye into all the world is what he said. All right. Again, a literal command. Uh, Luke chapter twenty four. Go over there. Luke chapter twenty four. And I know this kind of seems redundant right now, but see, I I think. I'm convinced sometimes we miss what he's saying. Because see, let me, let me, let me just give you a little Scottology here, all right? See, we are satisfied with reaching our, our neighborhood or our city or our county. That's not the command. The command is to go to all nations. The commands go into all the world. All right, here in, here in uh, Mark chapter, uh, I mean Luke chapter 24, verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures 
and said unto them, Thus is written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, <coughs> and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among, what's the next two words? There it is again. There it is again. All, all nations, he said. Now, we know Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, under the uttermost parts of the earth. See, it, it's a literal command. We've got to get a hold of that to start out with. He did not say, reach, is it Bellefontaine, Bell Fountain? Bell Fountain, okay. It, he did not see, say Solid Rock Baptist Church, reach Bell Fountain. That's not what he said. He did not say, what, what county are we in? He did not say uh, uh, Solid Rock Baptist Church, reach Logan County. That's not what he says. See, the command is this. His command is to reach the world. Now, can I be honest with you? Too many, too many times, we're short-sighted. Because our vision is, well, if we can just reach Bell Fountain. Well, if we can just reach Logan County. Uh-uh. No, your job's to reach the world. Amen. 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 So we, we've got to, man, right there, we, can I say this? We've got to get some renewed thinking right there. I, I, we've been too short-sighted in our vision. God's vision, and obviously, I get it, folks. I, I get it. We're, we're all human, amen? And, and uh, to think, how is our little church supposed to reach the world? Well, I, I believe there is a plan, and we'll look at it in a second. But, but understand, uh, man, we have power. Huh? Let's, let's be honest. We have been equipped to do the job. Amen. And so uh, let, let's, let's move on. It is a literal command. Uh, I, I'd say this. D does God have a plan to fulfill the command? Or did he leave it up to? No, he does. He has a plan. Can I say this? The problem is, see, we got away from the plan. We have. We've gotten away from the plan. See, I, I believe this with all my heart. Not only is this a book of theology, this is a book of methodology. Amen. It's a book of methodology. See, God, God, God did not say, okay, church, listen up, listen up, fellas. Reach the world. Good luck. That doesn't even make sense. There is no way man can come up with a plan. All right, so we, we, we've got it. Does God have a plan? Well, I, I'd say this. Turn back to Mark chapter four. We find Jesus. I believe Jesus started the church during his personal ministry. We find him as he is beginning. Listen, where, where does Jesus get his church members from? Somebody help me. Listen, what was John Baptist's job? See, his job is this, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He is preparing a people for Jesus. What, two, two prerequisites for church membership. What are they? So there he goes. You got to be saved, got to be baptized. What's John doing? <coughs> He's getting folks saved and baptized. Why? So that as the Lord starts his ministry, he's got something to work with. Now look, Matthew chapter 4. He, 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 he finds uh, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and, and you'll be saved. Is that what it says? Huh? See, these fellows are already saved. He's not calling them to salvation here. What's he doing? He's starting a church. And he gives them the very purpose of that church. Follow me and I'll make you what? 
Y'all help me now. Follow me. I'll make you what? Fishers of men. The very purpose of a church is this, to make fishers of men. That, that's, that, that, listen, that is foundational to us reaching the world. <coughs> Man, if we get a hold of this, all right, if, if you're saved, raise your hand. You're a member here, raise your hand. Now listen, it's your job to reach the world. That is your very purpose. For the Son of Man has come to your, say it out loud. That which was lost. See, his purpose is our purpose. All right? <coughs> so get it. He, the very purpose of a church, seeking to save that which was lost, to make fish. I'd, I'd go so far as to say this. See, I'm a literalist when, when it comes to Bible. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Don't tell me you're following him and you're not fishing for men. Come on. I got a problem with that. Come on. He said, follow me, I will make you. Not if you feel like it. Mm -mm. <coughs> One of two problems, either you're not following or you're disobedient and backslidden. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We're still looking at the plan now. Verse 14. You're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Well, I'd underline that. Uh, God's big into do, by the way. Be doers not just hearers. <laughs> henceforth, I call you, uh, henceforth, I call you not uh, servants, for the servant knoweth not whether his Lord doeth, but I've called you, uh, I have called you friends, for all things that I've heard my Father I've made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go, bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you should ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. See, this is the thing. We have a place of training and a people of training. It's called a church. And he said right here, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. Understand the very moment you got saved, you were drafted. Amen. See, we're to endure hardness as good what? Soldiers. Soldiers. See, we even teach our kids that. Junior church today, they may sing a song kind of like this. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the yeah. cavalry, shoot the artillery. Yeah. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Woo. See, we're, you're drafted the very moment you got saved. You're now in this army. Amen? And understand... Now, we are his friends that are to be involved in his plan. His plan and purpose is doing what? M making fishers of men, being, seeking and saving that which was lost. So, and who's to be involved? You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go. Now, uh, uh, quickly understand it is a revolving plan also. 2 Timothy 2.2, 2. remember that? The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So what we received, we're to not only pass on, but we're to pass it on well enough that they teach others also. Amen. And they know that's their job. Understand what I'm saying. It is your job not only to seek and to save that which was lost. It's your job to teach others how to seek and to save that which was lost. That's your job. Amen. That's what he says. He makes it clear there. All right. So <coughs> that's part. Of, <coughs> excuse me. Part of the plan. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. 
He gives us some trainers here as part of the plan. Verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, if you will. <coughs> the perfecting of the saints is this, is to bring to a high level of skilled ability. A lot of times we think of this, equipping, maturing, completing. Let, let's give it a real definition. To bring people to a high level of skilled ability. See, that's my job as an evangelist. It's a pastor's job. My job is to help you. <laughs> it's to help you to learn how to be your best in reaching souls for Christ. Because listen, listen. Didn't he say this earlier in John chapter 15? That, that I'm the vine, you're the branches. Yep. And he, he says, uh, every branch that abideth in me, and it, man, I'm not quoting it right, but he beareth fruit. Yes. All right, and he talks about purging it so you can bring forth what? And then he goes on and he says, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. See, he wants to just take you from just bearing fruit to bearing much fruit. Why? Because it's about him. Amen. Yes. See, it's about, th this whole thing's about him, Amen. folks. It is not just about us. It's not just about folks getting saved, though that's a big part. The largest part is this. It's about him. It's, if we'd ever get a hold of how big he is and who he is, it would change the way we think. I mean, he's, he's God. He's the one that's given us breath. He's the one that... Man, can you... How could anybody ever figure out the internal workings of our bodies? How, how, how do you figure out how to keep a plant going? How do you, how do you make a forest? How do you create a, a bug? And now, why he ever made mosquitoes, I don't know, amen? <laughs> but but I, I mean, honest, fleas and ticks, all those kind of things. But one, maybe one day he'll let us in on it. He doesn't have to, but maybe one day, you know. But honest to good, we couldn't have figured out that kind of stuff. We can't even figure out that there's only two genders. Huh? Yeah, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we have some special trainers, all right? Now, <coughs> Acts chapter 20, verse 20. <coughs> How I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you, taught you publicly and from house to house. Somebody help me out. Who's speaking here? We've got the Apostle Paul. Probably, in my mind, the greatest uh, Christian in the New Testament when it comes to works, when it comes to example. What, what, a, what a hero of the faith. Wouldn't it have been an honor just to know that guy? I, I can't wait to get to heaven to get to shake that guy's hand and thank him that he went and got some Gentiles, amen? amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Man, bunch of hard-headed Jews. Amen. I love them, but they didn't want to go after me. Amen. Now, look, this is what he did. He, he said, I showed you, taught you publicly, house from house. What was he teaching? Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Yep. Repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's teaching them soul winning. They said, this is how I did it. I showed you. He sat down in a public demonstration and showed them how to take the scriptures. By the way, didn't have a New Testament back then. All they had was Old Testament. But he showed them how to take the scriptures, show somebody how to be saved. Amen. Then he said, I taught you publicly. He, he took 
and he taught classroom sessions on practical and, and spiritual principles of soul winning. Things like, I, I'm sure he taught things like this. All sinners are like green beans. Amen. Y'all looking at me kind of strange. <laughs> this is the principle. You go down the local grocery store. You find the canned vegetable section. You find the green bean section. You got Del Monte. You got Green Giant. Maybe, uh, uh, let's see, Libby's. Some, some store brand. But you open the cans up. What's on the inside? See, sinners are just like that. They wear all kind of labels on the outside, but on the inside, they're exactly the same. Amen. And the principle is this. In Romans 1, 16, uh, Paul said this, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation Amen. to all that believe, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. Understand this. Everybody that we talk to, we need to be getting the gospel to. Yes. Not just inviting them to church but doing our best to try to get the gospel to them. As we were out, listen, my goal is not handing out Bibles in the Bible handout ministry. My goal is talking to people about the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. That's my job. That's my job. And I, I don't, I, I don't want to just hand everybody a Bible. I want to talk to them. Amen. That's, I want them to come to me. Amen. I really, that's my, that is my purpose and goal. And so, and see, I think that lines up with Scripture because I want to just, I want to talk to them. Now, I thank God for every Bible I do get to hand out, and I put in a, a, a gospel uh, a plan in the back of that Bible that we hand out, but, but man, the main thing, I want to I wanna share the gospel with them, all right? And so, uh, uh, man, all sinners are like green beans. What about this, shooing away birds? Another biblical principle, shooing away birds. Uh, all right, uh, parable of the sower. What happens to the first crowd that uh, where the seed was uh, fell by the wayside? What happens? Birds come along and devour up the seed. So what we have to do, see, Satan's trying to distract. We know he's trying to distract everybody we talk to. So what I have to do is learn to shoo him away when he begins to distract. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, man, we can learn some very biblical and spiritual principles in, in teaching soul winning. Problem is, we're not teaching folks how to win souls today. You, you, listen, preacher, in the past, you know how I learned? Just going with other folks and listening and watching them. But let's be honest about it. We are not having as many folks saved at the door today that we used to have. And so this is what's happening. Folks are coming. They're going out for a little while on, a, on soul winning, but they're not seeing folks saved, so they get discouraged. Why go? This isn't effective. Deacons don't go. Sunday school teachers don't go. Why should I go? Well, wait just a, wait just a minute. First, we've, we've used soul winning as a tool of church growth, which is fine. But see, that's not the reason we go soul winning. If you love me, keep my commandment. See, whether anybody ever gets saved or not, we go because we're keeping his commandments. Amen. That's our job. It's not our job to see people saved. Now, I want to see people saved, and I have seen people saved. But that's not primarily my job. My job is, listen, if they don't want to listen, not my problem. My problem is to tell them anyway. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. Our job is to get the gospel to them. And then he said from house to house. What's that? On the job training. Come on, go with me, brother. Let me show you how. Now, it, but if we're not able to lead them to Christ at the door so that they can learn how, then we have to begin to teach classroom sessions on how to win souls to Christ. And we failed in that. We've not been doing that. And so consequently, we have a lot of folks sitting in the pew today that do not know how to win souls to Christ. They've never won a soul. They don't know how to win souls. They're intimidated when they go out. And so they'd rather just not show up. Faults on the leadership. We can like it or not, but we got to get it changed. Amen or not? See, because every one of us, 
Man, listen, it is my job to teach you how to be your best at winning souls. And listen, God's not giving us the spirit of what? So if God didn't give us the fear, where is it coming from? And we, that is the biggest reason folks don't go. They're scared. What I say, I don't, I'm not sure what to say. I'm not sure what to do. Man, I can teach you how to overcome that fear. The just shall live by faith. Take the shield of faith. See, we, we can. The problem is we're not teaching. Amen. Now, let, we, we've only got a few minutes. Now, listen, the training's got to be specific. 1 Corinthians 14, he said, uh, that, that we need to make it, uh, the words, easy to be understood. As we go out, we need to make it simple. All right? We, we need to stick to the message. We're not out to debate doctrine. Listen, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God and their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. That's right. A lost man does not know spiritual things. That's Listen, this is the thing. We're going to argue uh, King James over NIV. Listen, a lost man doesn't get it. Get Baptist, better than Catholic. A lost guy doesn't understand. Why debate? Doc? Might he have an opinion? Yes. Can he understand? No way. He cannot understand it. That's Bible. Amen. And if he can't understand it, why debate? Sprinkling versus immersion. Quit debating. He doesn't understand. It's like finding a guy that cannot hear. You're walking down the street. You begin to ask him uh, uh, for directions to the post office. And when he doesn't answer, you beat him up real good. Well, he didn't even hear you. He doesn't have the right receiver. So why beat him up? Quit beating up the lost crowd. They cannot understand. Just stick with, Paul said this, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Stick with the message. Amen. Now, did it, did it, has it ever been accomplished? There, there's a big question. In the last 2,000 years, how many would say, yes, preacher, it has been accomplished at least one time? Let me see your hand. Got one. I mean, it's say, preacher, I don't think it's ever been accomplished since the uh, command was given. How I many of y'all are cowards? You're not going to raise your hand one way or the other. Amen. <laughs> take, take your Bibles. Amen. Take your Bibles, Colossians 1.23, and we're done. Colossians 1.23, and we're done. By the way, the early church believed it could be done. On the day of Pentecost, they had 3,000 saved. A few days later, they have 5,000 saved. And they begin to add to the church. They begin to multiply to the church. Now look at Colossians 1.23. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, now hang on, and which was preached to whom? What does it say? Which was preached to whom? Which is under heaven. Now y'all help me out. Is God an exaggerator? So either it was an accomplished and we've been missing it or God's exaggerating here in the book of Colossians. See, it's not an exaggeration. This is a thing. It was accomplished at least once, we know. Yep. And Satan has convinced us it's never been accomplished and it can't be accomplished. And so now we sit around thinking, man, if I can just win my town, that's not the job. If I can just win my county, your vision is too little. Come on, come on. Good. We serve a risen Savior. That's why things like a missions conference. Amen. So we can reach the world. Good. You may not be able to go into the rest of the world, but we can help fellas that can. Amen. Amen. Good. 
See that we we got to get over this little vision. We've got to get a bigger vision. Listen, listen. Give and it shall be. You think God God really meant a promise like that? You think he really meant that? You give. Listen, how many of y'all think God would be a debtor to somebody? Can I tell you? And y'all have heard this. You've heard it time and again. You cannot outgive God. Amen or right? All right. So if you can't outgive God, you get to giving by faith. What do you think God's going to do? God's going to say, okay, tighten down on their checkbook. See, I don't believe that kind of stuff. That's right. See, I believe God meant exactly what he said in that book. Given it shall be given unto you. Good pressure, good, good measure, press now, uh, uh, running over, shall men give unto you. See, we just got short-sighted somewhere. And folks, we're in the last days, and we got to get over that. Let, let, them, let those, the rest of them be a lay of the sea in church. We don't have to be. We don't have to be. See, we still have a free will. Yes. We can still believe that book and believe it's literal. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. We can still accomplish what it says we can accomplish. We got to get over the short vision. We got to get back to saying, look, we got a big God to do big things. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you now for the Sunday school time. Bless, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.